Hey guys, it's Sherlock here. So today we're going to be going through a dungeon guide for you guys in layers. Just want to start off with a huge shout out to those people who made this possible. Who's this? Benedict G, Hayward, Mills, Drexen, Corey, and Frodka, who allowed us to use their VODs and help with the information. All of them have been a valuable part of putting this together. Their VODs allow us to see what it's really like at that high level PvE. Links to their YouTubes and Twitch will be down in the description. So starting off with team composition, it is a very basic setup. So you have your healer on your life staff void gauntlet. For the healers, you should really be thinking of your life staff as being your secondary weapon. Your main weapon really is the void gauntlet. You're going to be using the void blade as your main source of damage. It also allows you to get your cooldowns quicker to get oblivion down, which will then give your team empowerment and also weakens all the mobs within that oblivion. From there, you're going to be choosing between Scream and Rupture. On a Nature Week, you're going to want to be looking at taking Scream with Putrefying Scream for the disease to reduce their healing. One build you can do it actually takes a point in Rupture as well, so you can switch to that for bosses to give your team an extra 20% lifesteal. Next up, you are going to have your Spear Great Axe DPS. This player is really look at having Enfeebling Skewer and Enfeebling Maelstrom. Their main goal is to weaken the mobs with these two abilities and also have high DPS and rend uptime with the Spear along with grouping all the mobs with a great axe and making sure everything is grouped properly. Next up, you have your great sword hammer. The great sword is your hack and slash DPS. It does have the utility of rupture, so do make sure you're using that to help group mobs a little bit tighter. And then use your hammer to help keep rend up times with armor breaker, but not only just that, when the fight starts to get a little bit hairy, don't be afraid to CC the mobs a little bit. It will help keep your team alive. Next, we have the star of the show, the rapier DPS. You will switch between sort of Ice Gauntlet and Void Gauntlet here. Ice Gauntlet, this allows a bit more utility with the Ice Wall and some high burst damage with Spike and Ice Storm. Now when it comes to tanking, there's various options you can do between Greatsword, Sword and Shield, Hatchet, usually using a Hammer offhand. Personally, I prefer using the Greatsword tank here. I usually spec into a more Defiance tree with using Rupture, Calamity, Counter and Relentless Rush. But I'll also take the ability that when you use heavy attacks, it puts you into Onslaught stance. And the reason why I do this is on Chartus, I switch to 5 con light. And with that, you can stay on Onslaught stance and be doing the exact same DPS the rest of your team is. All you need to do is have a second great sword that you can switch to with an opal in it. And you will be doing big damage at the end there. Your hammer is your most important weapon as a tank. Using it to effectively CC the mobs will keep you and your team safe. To do this effectively, you want to use a CC ability and then 2-3 to three light attacks in between to keep your cooldowns up. This here will allow you to rotate through your abilities to keep everything permanently CC'd. Usually I would open up with a Wrecking Ball, this gives yourself 20% Fortifier. Then your Shockwave and your Clearer help sustain you with the 35% lifesteal from Crowd Crusher. Ensuring you use those 2-3 to three light attacks in between, this will allow you to keep up that CC and use your abilities one at a time keeping yourself and the team alive. When it comes to your armor on the tank, there's varying levels to this, so you can run heavy just for this beginning area. Otherwise, the other option is to run heavy all the way up until Scylla, and then switch to a lower con light set from there, and there's a Chartist dropping to five con light. Now for your protection on your armor, you're gonna to wanna to go full elemental protection for this, whatever the mutation week is. On Chartist, I do like taking some strike protection. It does stop you getting one shot from Chartist, which is very embarrassing. On Scylla, if you're tanking, you can take some thrust and slash gems and amulets, which will help a lot. But when you're DPSing, you don't really need to do any switches here. Let's get into it. We'll have a look at the side of the dungeon here. I will be giving some tips and tricks throughout the dungeon and also ways to kind of lighten the load if you are just learning to speedrun and kind of cut these pulls in half and make your life a little bit easier. Some of these pulls are quite spicy, so just splitting them in half as you're learning to do these speedrun tactics will help a lot. So at the start of the dungeon, you're going to want your rapier ice corn to drop an ice wall. This will give you some initial haste at the start of the dungeon. Instead of your tank, you're actually going to want your greatsword hammer DPS running in first. They want to grab the aggro of all of the mobs here and fight on the archer at the bottom of the stairs. They're going to be looking at opening up with a shockwave. This will get rid of some of the initial DPS from the archer and allow the healer to drop a sacred ground orb and beacon as they run past. Your DPS are going to be trying to keep everything clumped as tight as possible. In that initial pull, your spear great axe is going to want to hit that grab well and maelstroms to get everything nice and tight. As if the crawlers get aggro onto the healer and follow them up, your run is ruined and you'll need to start over. Now the healer and tank are going to be running past up to the top area and starting to spam the doors open as soon as possible. The tank is going to be using their CC chain to stay alive while the healer opens up the doors as quickly as possible and dropping heals as they come off cooldown. 
The ideal rotation for the tank is going to be a CC ability and then two light attacks into another CC ability. Remembering that your shockwave and your clear out actually gives you a lot of healing with the crowd crusher ability. Now in nature weeks you may struggle to kill the name mom tier with the extra healing. So you'll look at pulling them up to the second door on the left. That way when that side opens up and the spearmen spawn you can lock them down straight away otherwise they will die of your healer. Now the idea in this room isn't to kill anything. All you need to do is survive until the last door is closed and then the mobs will despawn. As you are learning to speedrun it is actually best to split this into two pools. Fight as a group on the archer, then drag everything up to the first door. In this area you want to do it as we talked about before in the speedrun, spam the doors open as quickly as possible, but you can do it as a group to help keep each other alive. There is no need to get any gatherables yet. We'll be able to worry about that later as we have an unstuck mechanic that will bring us back to the start of the dungeon and we can go through and get the gatherables then. It's important to just get into the fights as quickly as possible and will save you valuable time. Once the final glyph is unlocked, the team can then move on to exit the area. Do be mindful that the mobs don't despawn into a second or so after the doors open so you can be shot in the back. As long as you're not low health this shouldn't be an issue but is something to keep in mind. Now if your tank wants to switch to light before Scylla, this is an opportunity to change now. Do make sure you hug the left hand wall as you come through this area, you really want to be dodging as many of these mobs as you can. Sometimes you will aggro the taskmaster or the crawler. This isn't an issue, the tank can just get aggro of that and drag it down into the next area. Make sure you're clipping this resurrection point on the right hand side, it can be easy to miss. As you come down the stairs, the tank wants to use a soft taunt on the mobs, like a berserk, calamity counter or defender's resolve, and then move down to the mob by the doorway. I usually open up with a wrecking ball here, wait for the rest of the mobs to come in and use a shockwave as sometimes the aggro can turn onto your healer. Due to this, the healer usually wants to move in next to where the tank is or slightly behind to allow the tank to be able to catch these mobs. Here you should be able to get away with one sacred ground using your CC chain that we talked about earlier with your two light attacks into a CC. Do be mindful of the crawlers coming in late as well as they can kill the healer while the DPS start moving up to the right. Usually the greatsword DPS will use some sort of CC on the archer and then move on to the orb. The DPS wants to be unlocking this orb as soon as possible and updating the healer and tank on the progress of it so they know timing wise to move into the next area. The other two DPS want to kill their archer as soon as possible and then move down to assist the tank and healer. This is where the DPS opening up the orb is really important that they're keeping the healer and the tank updated. If the sacred runs out with any more than about 50% left on the orb then you do want another sacred otherwise you hold it until the next room. As we talked about earlier with the gatherables leave the life bloom in this area and move on to the mobs as quickly as possible. Once the doorway is open the tank then wants to move in onto the archer and try and group everything onto the archer itself. Usually you want a shockwave in the middle of it to give yourself some time until the heels are down and try and move in behind the archer. This will allow your spear great axe to use their grav well, maelstrom, reap to ball this up nice and tightly. In this room your main focus is the taskmasters as once they are dead the door will open you can carry on. If the name mob is still up you can drag him down into the next area. As always be careful of the late coming crawlers they can jump and kill your healer. In this room as a healer you should just be able to drop your sacred ground, your beacon and your orb and then pull out your void blade and help with the DPS. Using your scream up time this will help keep the mobs balled after the grav well and assist your team with the rends and extra DPS. Once the doors are open one of your DPS, usually the greatsword hammer, will run straight through and start making their way to Scylla. Here they will talk to Scylla, start the quest and jump off the cliff. The healer they will move through the doorway and their goal here is to shoot the two archers standing down on the platform, one on the left and one on the right. By shooting these two archers and then standing back slightly, they will line a sight their way into the bottom of the stairs. Here the tank wants to try and catch them with a shockwave along with a javelin ear, where the spear great axe DPS can use their grav wall and clump it all nice and tight. You should be able to kill everything from this bottom platform in one ball at the bottom of the stairs here. That allows you to be in the perfect place for the quest to update after your other DPS talks to Scylla. Once that quest updates and the archers spawn at the top of the stairs, usually I would move up as a tank and open up with a wrecking ball just to get aggro of the archer and making sure they don't shoot your healer. The healer usually wants to drop a beacon and an orb here, but they want to hold their sacred ground. 
Two of the DPS want to quickly clean up this archer while the tank moves in towards the name mob. Here I'll usually stop halfway and use a soft haunt, a calamity counter, a berserk to make sure you get the aggro of both crawlers on the left and right and then move in behind the name mob. This is where your healer is going to want to drop their sacred ground. Do be mindful if there's a phalanx mutation as it can send the sacred ground onto a weird angle. Timing wise, the DPS that jumped off the cliff after talking to Scylla should be arriving around now and your spear great axe should be able to hit a grab well just in between the name mob and the two archers which will clump that nice and tightly. Your main goal here is to get the two archers and the name mob and the two crawlers in one tight ball that you can CC together which will keep the team much safer. This name mob has a few abilities you want to watch out for, mainly being the one where he spins his staff above his head. This is interruptible with a shockwave or a shield bash, but can be missed, so make sure you dodge this ability. If this area is grouped nice and tightly, it will allow all DPS and the healer to get in and get the job done. Once this name mob is down, you can then move into the next area. Here, the healer is going to want to shoot only the archer on the right hand side and then hide in behind the pillar, which will line of sight the archer in. The healer is going to want to focus their sacred ground just at the bottom of the stairs. In a super sweaty speedrun, the three DPS and the tank will run into clean straight away and then move back. This can make it quite difficult with grouping if you aren't tight as they will start to run everywhere. If you want an easier option here, usually we would just send one DPS into cleanse and everyone else would cleanse a little bit later in the fight. Here you are looking at grouping up all of the mobs at the bottom of the staircase ensuring that the archer is pulled into the group. Once you cleanse there is a javelin air that spawns on the left hand side as you come into the room. Please make sure you attack him to draw him into the group otherwise that will delay you a lot. The tank really wants to hold shockwave until that name mob is spawned to ensure they get aggro of all of these mobs. You then want to be looking at moving back slightly out of the clump rather than being in the middle of the clump and using your CC abilities like your wrecking ball, clear out and shockwave as this is a large pull. Once your tank has this aggro and the spear great axe user has clumped everything nice and tightly, it is usually very safe for the healer to then come in and carry on DPSing. The healer using their scream here is, is vital to stop the javelin ears and the name mob jumping back out of the clump. If you're going for the safer option where people haven't cleansed, usually when there's about 10% health left, I will use a shockwave to lock it in place and that will allow me as a tank to then go and cleanse and come back without any mobs chasing me. Please ensure everyone cleanses here. There's nothing worse than moving into the next area just to find out one person hasn't cleansed. If you're switching to a specific boss set for Scylla, now is your time as you're auto running down to her. Please be careful not to run off the bridge. I definitely haven't done that before. As a tank, I really like running slash and thrust gems on Scylla. But as a DPS or healer, there's no real need to switch gems here. Scylla is a really basic boss fight. As a DPS and healer, it is really safe. The healer just wants to be looking at placing sacred ground on the tank, orb on themselves and beacon on Scylla. The Rapier DPS wants to be keeping their Ice Pylon on the ground away from Scylla. That will allow Scylla to target the Ice Pylon with their spear. That means the healer can stay in on the Void Blade, keeping the Oblivion uptime. So once Scylla gets to about 9 or 10 stacks, she will spawn an Orb. You want to be dropping this as soon as it's up. With the speedrun team, you'll have more than enough DPS to get through this in one or maybe two Orb phases. Ideally, only one person grabs this orb as it does rend the person taking it. Once Scylla moves over to that orb that was dropped, she will then go into a sequence of magic attacks that don't target anyone in particular, so just be mindful of the damage. If you are really struggling in this section, you can run some arcane protection as these magic attacks do arcane damage. Also keep in mind that Scylla does not have a back, so abilities like Rogue are useless here. You'd rather use Vicious or Enchanted. Depending on your team's DPS, you may get a second orb. You want to look at dropping this around that 9 or 10 stack mark as well. As a tank, the main ability you need to worry about is the spear she throws at you as this will push you backwards. If a sacred has just been placed, that means you're going to be without heals for a significant amount of time and it does deal a lot of damage. You can block this ability, but it will use all of your stamina, so the best option is to dodge it if possible. Once Scylla is done, you'll be splitting into two teams. One will be the healer, a DPS and the tank. The other one will be a DPS capable of soloing the top room and another DPS that can slot an ice golem. Team one that has the two DPS. The first DPS runs in and drops an ice pylon on the first platform, runs up to the middle platform and starts to unstuck animation straight away. While they're doing this, the other DPS is making their way up to the top, ready to start fighting. 
When there's about two to three seconds left of the unstuck, they notify the other DPS and they stand on the platform to start the wave. Here, you wanna be soloing the first group. You can take it slow, use your CC, your health pots, just stay alive here as if you die, the whole run is ruined. The goal is to just solo the section and then you go and hide over in the corner until the wave is finished. The DPS that unstuck, now is the time to get gatherables. Get the first life bloom on the left and the second room, you can safely get the one on the right if need be, you just need to wait for the mobs to turn around you then get the life bloom just down from the orb and meet up with the rest of the team in the cleanse room team two now this is the time for your tank to respec if need be if they have been heavy all the way up until Scylla they can now respec into their light set usually on a good mutation here I'll run light 5 con up to about light 100 con if it is a rough mutation start off at that high level around the 100 to 150 con mark until you feel comfortable here, the healer wants to get the life bloom just over the bridge, and you want to get the node just into the left of the cleanse room. You can use this time to kill the archer in the room, just in case you guys aggro him later. You then want to have the whole team waiting where the name mobs spawn, with the healer being ready to drop their heals and open up the door. Once the timer is up, the DPS about to move through the quest will update. You have the healer drop all heals on the group and then start opening the door. Your spear great axe wants to be hitting that grab as soon as the mobs spawn. You then want your tank to grab aggro, rotate around so their back is facing towards the stairwell. This allows the DPS to safely get back attacks off. Depending on how quickly you can kill these mobs, you need to be careful of the crawlers coming up the stairs as they will go straight for the healer on the door. If you can, reap them into the clump. Your main goal here is to be killing the archer as the merely named mob can actually be dragged through into the next area. You do not need any of these gatherables unless you have had deaths. For each death, you can get one of these three gatherables to make up for them. You want to be dragging through all of the mobs down this hallway onto the archer at the top of the stairs and fighting here. The goal is to quickly kill the archer and then move on. You do want a DPS to get this last gatherable on the left here. It's very easy to just two tap this. What I like to do in this next room is get the healer, shoots that archer and the name mob, and then just moves back slightly out of line of sight. It actually brings him just out of the water, so then you're fighting at the top of the stairs. Then the tank can shockwave them in place. All DPS can come to that same spot, or your DPS can meet you at that spot, so your spear great axe can then group everything nice and tightly. For the second wave here, you want to be moving over towards the doorway on the bigger mob that spawns. You need to CC him straight away, otherwise he will dive out. This will ensure a quick easy kill as everyone knows exactly where they're fighting. For the two javelineers that spawn on opposite sides of the middle river, you want to be pulling them and grouping them into the middle. Ideally you can rupture the one on the right, reap the one on the left, and from here they'll be close enough that they should actually jump together and you can lock them down there. The healer using scream, dropping sacred ground in this spot, and then the tank using shockwave, you should be able to lock them down and kill them quickly. The great X user wants to ensure that they save their grab well for the next section, as if they use it here, it won't be up in time. For the following wave, you're going to have the two archers and the melee mob spawn. The tank wants to grab aggro of the melee mob, drag it over towards the archers, whereas the great X wants to be ensuring they pull in those two archers into the middle so we can fight everything as one clump. From here, the team wants to move on down the hallway onto the next name mob, and as always with speedruns, leave those loot bags behind. Here, you want to focus big damage and CC as if he moves into his invulnerable form, it's just going to slow down the fight. With the tank focusing their hammer CCs and the DPS making sure they're getting in behind the name mob to get the extra backstab damage, this is a quick and easy fight. The whole team wants to be quickly running into the boss fight while the healer opens up the door. Here, as a tank, I usually switch to full 5 con. I switch to a great sword that I can use on sword stance with an opal so I can do as much damage as possible. When it comes to charters, I do recommend running some strike protection here. A lot of people say it's unnecessary, but if you have the jewelry, it is worth switching to. It just stops accidentally getting one shot and going down, which will just waste time. Ideally, the rapier wants to be taking the orb on the right as they can still hit Chartus with their tondo. And they want to be placing that orb in the right hand slot. As if he gets caught in an animation when you get around that three to four health bars down mark, he can actually zap down the left hand side, losing the orb. Here, detonate do not work when he is in his down stage we sometimes run firestorm here just for the extra power but when he goes down you want to use all your dps you can and your healer wants to make sure they have 100 percent uptime on the oblivion even with the 90 percent their team you should be able to kill chartus on his first down as always thank you very much for making it this far through the video if you want to support us you can come and join us on patreon come and visit us on twitch and share this video to your friends 
This video is intended as a guide for the New World Builds website. If you want to find any more information, come and visit us on newworldbuilds.com.